London, a city full of history, is the capital of the United Kingdom. Londinium, its Latin name, was also the capital of the province of Britain during the Roman Empire. The ruins from that period, for the most part, have been destroyed or reused, but thanks to the continuing excavations underground, Londinium is now returning, revealing its incomparable secrets. Go down to an underground car park next to the Museum of London, and you will find the remains of a Roman gateway. The gate once led into a large fort sited in the northwest corner of Londinium, home to the ceremonial guard and staff officers who served the governor of Roman Britain. By the time the Roman fort was built in about AD 120, Londinium was by far the most important town in the province of Roman Britain. The Forum and Basilica, the main administrative and financial centers, were the largest such buildings north of the Alps. There were at least two sets of public baths and an amphitheater. The Thames side quays were crowded with merchant ships, and across the river was a thriving suburb. London was where both the provincial governor and the emperor's financial agent, the procurator, had their headquarters. The fort in Londinium covered about five hectares. In plan, it was almost square, over 200 meters along each side with rounded corners. Its stone wall rose to a height of over five meters and was reinforced on the inside with a thick earthen bank. In front was a V-shaped ditch, some one and a half meters wide, too small to give much protection against a determined attacker, but enough to trap intruders against the wall, exposing them to fire from sentries positioned high above. Along each side there was a gatehouse, and at each corner, and at intervals between the corners and the gates, were stone towers. These rose above the sentry walk, providing additional vantage points for defending soldiers, as well as space for stores or ammunition. In design, the London fort was very similar to the forts being built on Hadrian's Wall at about the same time. Well-preserved examples, such as Hausteds or Birdelswald, show us what it would have looked like. However, it was very much larger, around three times the size of the average Hadrian's Wall fort, though less than a quarter the size of a typical legionary fortress. This is because it was never the base for a single regiment but for a wide range of different units, especially legionary soldiers, who were seconded to London for special duties associated with the governor's staff. Inside, the fort was divided by wide streets, the most important of which led to the four gates. At the street intersection in the center of the fort, stood a series of large buildings that served the administrative and logistical needs of the garrison as a whole. Archaeologists have found few traces of these buildings as they were destroyed in the medieval and early modern periods. But we can be sure that one will have been the Principia, the garrison headquarters, a large hall alongside a courtyard where soldiers could parade. Nearby will have been the commanding officer's house a spacious residence that accommodated his wife and slaves, as well as military staff officers, and a granary to hold large stocks of wheat for the men and their horses. The granary will have been massively built, with a raised floor to keep the grain dry and buttresses to support the great weight of the sacks of grain above. The soldiers themselves lived in rows of very long, narrow barrack blocks. Each group of eight men had a pair of rooms, one for sleeping, the other for cooking and storing their kit. The block itself normally comprised ten pairs of rooms, and so could hold a century of eighty soldiers. Forts were organized so that men from the same regiment were housed close together, for example, in one of the quarters formed by the principal streets. 
One of these quarters has been excavated recently, and it seems to have contained six barrack blocks, exactly right for either an auxiliary regiment of 480 men or a legionary cohort. Elsewhere, there may have been stables for the horses used by the cavalry or message scouts. A century later, the fort was decommissioned and the buildings dismantled. By that time, the military situation in Britain had changed and soldiers were now based elsewhere in London, especially on the south side of the Thames. The fort walls, however, were never pulled down. Instead, they were incorporated into a new town wall that was built around the whole of Londinium at about A.D. 200. This ensured their survival for the next 1,800 years. <laughs>